Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be talking about how to do standard CRUD operations on a MongoDB using Flask Mongo Alchemy. So if you haven't watched the previous video that I made about connecting to a MongoDB, uh, watch that first. I'll include a link in the description below. But if you have, you can continue with this video. So I have the same code set up from last video. The only difference is I created a different database to do this on. And I'll uh, change the example from example to user. So instead of just name, I'll add name and password. Be plain text just for demonstration purposes. So that's it. I'm going to demonstrate uh, doing the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete on this user class. So let me start a Python and import everything from the file from connect import star. And if there are no errors, then that means I've connected successfully. So I have uh, my database set up. So to create something, you simply instantiate the class with uh, the data that you want. So for instance, I'll have a user called Anthony, so I'll call the variable Anthony, and I'll say user name equals Anthony and password equals secret. And I didn't type something correctly there. I forgot the quote after Anthony. All right, so that's not enough to actually create Anthony in the database. I have to call Anthony.save. And now Anthony should be inserted into the database with the name Anthony and password of secret. So let me refresh the page and I should see it in this collections part right down here. So name is user documents is one. And I have um, Anthony and secret inserted here as, along with the um, auto-generated ID. So let me insert another user. I'll call this user Becky. So name is Becky and password is uh, password. Let's just do that. And then if I call Becky.save, and let me go back to the collection, uh, my database. So two documents are now under user. I have Becky and Anthony here. So what if I wanted to query this? So like other object relational or object document mappers, it's pretty easy to query. Um, I would do something like this to query. So let's say user.query, and then I can filter by a particular field. So in this case, I'll use name. So I'll do filter, and then user.name is equal to Anthony. And I just want the first result. So it returns this connect.user object, meaning it found something. So I'll assign this to a variable. I'll give it A. So A is the um, result of querying. So if I do a.name, I should see the name. If I do a.password, I see the password, both Unicode. So if I want to update this, let's say I'm changing the password for Anthony, I can simply do something like a.password equals new secret. And if I do a.save, then the password should have been updated in the database. So we see here that it's secret right now. If I refresh the page and wait a moment, I see that is now a new secret because I updated the value in the database. So that's pretty easy to do. And that's one of the advantages of uh, these NoSQL databases, especially ones that are based off JSON like this. Uh, it's pretty easy to manipulate the data in the database. Of course, there's a drawback that there's no hard schema, so it can be a little difficult to keep up with everything. But as far as updating specific things, it's very easy to do. So I just updated that, and if I query again, um, let me get back to this. So if I overwrite that, well, I'll create a new variable just so it doesn't get confusing. So B, and then if I do B.password, you see it's new secret. So I've shown you inserting, I've shown you um, querying, and I've shown you updating. So the last thing is deleting, and it's really easy to do as well. B is Anthony, the result of that. So if all I do is b.remove, that will be enough to actually delete something out of the database. So b.remove, 
I hit it and then I'll refresh the page so I can see my updated database and I should end up with only one record. I now only have Becky in here because I deleted Anthony and if I query for Anthony again, let's call this C and I inspect C, I get nothing because there was no data return. So that's just a very simple overview of how to create documents to enter into the database, read those documents once they're in the database, update them, and then finally delete them. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about MongoDB or any other videos you would want me to make about MongoDB, just leave a comment down below. And um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.